Hello everyone. Now let's take some measurements off of our little part here. Uh, one thing, uh, a key thing, the head stopper here, well I know the machine this came off of was mainly done in metric. That's the M5 screw. So um, I'm going to use metric, metric system to do my measurements and I'm using a digital caliper since it's a lot easier. Now digital calipers if you know how to use a dial caliper, digital is much easier. This one, I can actually switch back and forth between inches and millimeters. And one of the key secrets of this, you have to pretty much set it. If it's at zero and it's not at zero, just quickly set it back to zero. So let's do an inside measurement. I'm going to work on, let's say, the height and the width a long ways. And we're going to do this to, let's say, um, since we're in millimeters, we'll do it to one decimal place. Here I'm looking at, let's see, 20, 27. One thing you got to uh, take into account when you're actually measuring with calipers, if you notice, when you have it around the edge, and if I just twist it a little bit, you know, keep this, it grows larger. So you have to make sure that, literally, it's parallel and the size of your caliper are exactly at the same location in the height wise otherwise yeah if i if i so you can look at it let's see can i look at it this way no, it's kind of hard to show you but if i have it let's see if i'm measuring like this if i'm measuring like twisted see that's, that's way out of place of course it's going to be a larger number than and straight across so sometimes you just have to play with it also you can take into account that the majority of design engineers when they're designing things See if I'm going to round off to one decimal place, it's 2702. I'm going to assume that they meant 27. And it's probably within the tolerance. I like to use a different color um, for taking the measurements just because it makes it a little cleaner. So 27 wide, 27.0. We can put that down. Let's just put 27. Height wise, let's see. Thirty-eight point oh three, so thirty-eight is pretty much the design intent. If you want, you can always put your decimal places just to keep it. Yeah, I'll remind myself units. Oops, metric. X point X millimeter. Just remind myself. Let's see. Let's just locate that hole. I'm going to assume just by looking at it, it's right in the center. So 27, I should be looking at 13.5, should be right around the center of it. Let's see. And that's looking right about correct. 13.5, 13.47, but round off 13.5. So I'm just going to say it's in the center. I don't even have to. <laughs> See how center line, it's my, I don't know if that's uh, my old architectural side, but center line I'm gonna say it's right in the center so do I have to mark it down no I could mark down 13.5 or when I'm constructing this later just know that it's right at the center line how far is it from the top oops my calipers off so I have to reset let's see I'm gonna say right around 10.5 So now I've got that side dimensioned. Let's see how deep is this pocket. If I want to get technical, I can actually do a hidden line. If 
first before I actually see how deep it is. Let's see how wide these are. I'll say it's right around 1.6 for the thin one. And the thick side. Five point five. Now we can use our depth gauge. The way, let's see if I can actually show you all this. Basically, depth gauge sticks out just as far as the inside dimensions are wide and the or, I mean, yeah, inside measurement, or outside measurements and inside measurements. So basically just put it up against what you're trying to measure and then extend it out until it gets to the bottom. Oops, sometimes you got to play up a little bit. Point eight nine. That may be a little more accurate. Right around five, so we'll call that five depth. Here's where it has more room. It would make a lot more sense, but I don't have it, so I'm going to just go like this. Come out here. Now, let's get the overall length. This pretty much level level one hundred and thirty four design ten one hundred and thirty four that I'll put it down here. about the height of the back. Check both sides. 17.52. Round off 17.5. Do the slots real quick. Let's say the width uh, to measure the inside. We'll actually use the inside measurement here. 11.01, so 11. And I assume both of them are the same. Yep. 11 by 14. 11 by 14. Fourteen by eleven width. And judging by looking at it, the sunken portion, the through slots are concentric with the larger slot. So I can go actually to the bottom slot so usually measure from the bottom. So through slots are let's see. 5.5 5 wide by 8.5 deep. And since I can just call it out, put a little arrow. 
8.5 by 5.5 slot. And notice how I didn't call out on the slots wherever the diameters of the outside because it is the width of the actual slot. So 11 diameter of, of the actual um, arcs on the ends are 11 and five and a half on the inside ones. Let's see what, what is the depth. Okay, as I measure straight down, six. Depending on how I how flat I get, I'm gonna go with six depth. <laughs> Eight point five. I just mark it like this: uh, slot depth six point zero. Now let's calculate where the slot is in reference to the back. Okay. Kind of hard to show you on here. 9.5 is what I'm getting. I tweak it back and forth until I get perfect 9.5. <clears throat> Now, let's see, 9.5, how far from the edge? Six. Six inches from the edge. Now, how far are they apart from each other? Just make sure I am zero set. Notice how yeah, if you rock it perfectly, you'll figure out 46, 0 .03. 46.0. That gives me almost all the features. Now, only two more features. Let's figure out where this curve is. That one's going to be a little bit tricky because we have to take into account, uh, you know, before there is the fillet, think of it as two lines, that's how you'd measure it out. So it's going to be approximation right where it's going to be. The top portion here is actually flush, so I can measure that. That's going to be a little bit hard. Put design tent 7.97, 8 inches on top. That's before you have a fillet, though. All right, not 8 inches, 8 millimeters. Uh, now, let's try to figure out the bottom. Let's see here. Zero it out. I'd say 90, 9.96. So, oops, from here to, so there's a little curvature there, there, there. Now, I believe we have enough information to construct it. Oh wait, one more thing, forgot. All of the fillets around the edges. Oh, we know it's gotta be 
uh, if I'm looking, you know, if you can see really closely, right here, this edge is actually filleted, but not fully. That's a pretty sharp edge. So it's a little bit larger. We know it's 1.6. My guesstimation is going to be right around 2. One way I can kind of guess it. Pull this out too, lock it so it doesn't go anywhere. And I'm going to eyeball. Two. Two. I'm going to say it's uniformly two everywhere. Typical. Now we just got to remember our only spots that are not filleted are the front, this little portion right here. That's pretty sharp, and actually, let me make that clear. Curvature, curvature, curve, 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 curve. Therefore, it's pretty clear on my drawing exactly where all my fillets are. And then we're pretty much done. Almost forgot the last component the threaded hole. I knew it was an M, I have an M, actually M5 screw. I can verify it is M5, and that is. Uh, we know the depth. So we can use our depth gauge. Let's see what fit. Yes, it will. All the way down the bottom. Fourteen. Oh. It's almost 14 and a half, 14.43. And I can see, uh, I can't really see down the hole, but I can see the tip. So it's going to have a tip from a drill bit. So it's going to be a little bit more than 14. It showed 14.4 ish, but that's getting this tip not perfectly right in the center. So I'm going to go 14.5. To be well off. So M five to a depth of fourteen point five. Now we're pretty much finished. We have all the information we need to Go into SolidWorks now and construct this part.